Okay, in the next demo, we're going to see how you can automate systems management in an optimized IT environment using powerful combination of App Manager, Operation Center, Aegis, and Cloud Manager. I'm going to ask some people to join me on stage now. We have Eric Anderson, Ted Ernst, Tobin Eisenberg, Mark Jones, and Alex Denoyan. Hey, Jay. So today, we're going to show you how to solve your business challenges and day-to-day -day, uh, activities by effectively leveraging public and private clouds. Now, to help with this, I'm going to bring out Mark from Acme Insurance to show us how NetIQ solutions have helped them. Welcome out, Mark. Come on out. Thanks, Eric. Mark, great to see you. So, Mark, you came to us with a challenge around enabling IT to better react to uh, business events. Can you tell us more about that? Yep, that's right. Well, at Acme, we're always looking to provide the best service at the lowest cost, which I think is probably true for all of us in this room today. Uh, but one of the most challenging areas for us is uh, claims processing, especially after a major disaster. Wow. Not only do we have to bring in teams of adjusters to help people through a really difficult time, uh, but our IT systems also have to be available and performant to cope with the spike in claims that we see. And of course, the worst part of it all is that it's really hard for us to plan around disasters. We don't know when they're coming. Wow, imagine it is. So what are you doing to pr improve the handling of these situations? Uh, well, Acme is launching a new initiative to utilize temporary claims adjusters. Um, these adjusters will come in and enable us to rapidly expand our capacity during one of these crises. And now, my job is to make sure that our IT systems can keep pace with those capacity changes. Uh, we're looking at public and private clouds to address this need, but we've identified some really significant challenges. Really? What are those challenges? Well, let's just take a look. Uh, the first challenge is just enough cost. How do we uh, size our IT capacity in a way that's aligned to the business need at any given moment. We don't want to overbuild and have idle capacity. Okay, so over provisioning is bad. That's right, that's okay. right. So the second challenge is around our management and reporting systems. If we have an environment that is adjusting size depending on uh, need, how do we make sure that our management systems and our reporting systems can also keep up with those kinds of changes? Okay. Uh, third challenge is around access control, particularly in public and private clouds. How do we, as we're bringing these adjusters in and out of our organization, how do we keep up with that, both on our cloud and on the public clouds that we're utilizing? And what about security? Well, that's a key thing. How do we uh, integrate, how do we build an integrated security model that lets us uh, control and audit what's happening both in our private cloud and our public cloud uh, systems in a seamless way? Okay, and your fifth challenge? That's around executive visibility. During one of these big disasters when we've got uh, a lot of extra work going on and load on the systems, how do our uh, business managers know that we're handling that load, our IT systems are working, how do they know how many claims are coming through and so on? Wow, Mark, you've certainly got your work cut out for you. But I know that NetIQ has been helping you and in today's demonstration we'll cover some of the items <coughs> on Mark's list and then we'll also um, on Friday finish the remainder of the list. So with that, let's get started. First, we'll tack the, tackle the challenge of aligning capacity in demand to real time. For that, I'd like to introduce the NetIQ team that's been helping Acme to implement these solutions. So we've got Tobin, Alex, and Ted here to walk us through these solutions. Guys? Well, Eric, like many enterprises, we're using App Manager to monitor the health, performance, and availability of our system. We're using our response time modules to monitor the end user experience. And because of our field people using VoIP for their communication, we're also monitoring that service. Tobin, how about you? So first we'll start with the Operations Center dashboard. Here I can see the claim processing service, health availability metrics in a relevant way. This is more of the business perspective. So let me show you the Operations Center console where we're showing more of an architectural layout. In the top part, the outside of the network, we can see a load balancer as well as a web server. And on the inside, we can see the application server as well as the database server. For monitoring, we have feeds coming in from App Manager as well as other management tools. 
where they can update the service model in a dynamic manner and show new workloads as they come and go. So we are using the cloud manager to manage the claims application. Claims application is the, the complex service which was deployed and uh, built and also uh, defined in the side of the cloud manager. And if we drill down in on the claims application, you will see that it actually pretty complex. It's contained out of uh, three uh, different workloads which they've been virtualized and they are all separate. And that key, key part here is because we can use this separate components later on to increase the capacity on the demand. Also you can see that uh, information here will also have such attributes like a cost associated with the service as well as we, if we drill down on individual workloads which is the virtual machines in the back end you can also see the, the services associated with that. Cloud Manager will help you to uh, deploy, like I said earlier, define, deploy, and, and build the service as well as deploy it and control it over the private cloud as well as the public cloud in very costly efficient way. As well as we can delegate those applications after the deployment to the roles accordingly. Wow, those are really powerful <laughs> tools. Yeah, and actually, now comes the coolest part. Uh, guys, let's show Eric how we save costs by automatically provisioning new capacity as a uh, load occurs. One of the ways we create a powerful combination is with the use of Aegis, our IT process automation solution. With Aegis, we can take inputs from Operations Center, determine when the load is increased to the point we need to increase capacity. Then we can automatically increase that capacity to meet the load. But Mark, your team was telling me that you're not really comfortable with doing it at that time. Yeah, that's right. Uh, when one of these major disasters occurs, uh, we actually already initiate a predefined major disaster response plan inside of ACME. And that plan sets in motion a number of procedures all across the company. And what we're looking to do is to activate this capacity expansion when that plan is activated uh, instead of waiting for the load to rise. We want to get ahead of the game a little bit. Wow, so what you're going to show us is you're going to take Aegis, you're going to automatically drive this instantiation of an additional web server because of our new adjusters that we have out, and we're going to automatically see all the results of that in Cloud Manager yep. and Operations Center? Yep, absolutely. Wow, I got to see this. Yeah, let's take a look. I think uh, we'll see Aegis over here on the far left. Here we've got a workload, uh, workflow running inside of Aegis. Uh, on the far upper left, you can see that it's read out of Aegis information about uh, a ticket that a disaster is starting uh, or has happened, and we're going to uh, prepare some capacity for it. The next step is to go ahead and notify key IT uh, stakeholders. So I could get an email telling me this process is happening. That's right. The, there's a disaster response that we're starting. You need to prepare your staff and so on. That middle section there is to figure out how much additional capacity we need and then to go ahead and tell. Uh, cloud manager to start provisioning that additional capacity. Okay, and I can see it just did that. That's right. Here in cloud manager, we can see that we've got an, um, a new service that's submitted and it's building. And if we go over to the deploy tab, we should see it arrive soon. So there's the there first one. There it is. Yep, yep, it just came up. And there's the second one. So now we've added that capacity. And wow. if, we, if we take a look at Operations Center here, we can see up at the top under DMZ, we've got that uh, web app there, that instance, and there's the second one. Wow, that, that so I arrived. see the two web servers. Yep. Wow, so we just automated the whole process. That really is a powerful combination. Yep. <laughs> so, Ted, I'm wondering what made you decide to use Aegis to build that automation rather than just wire all the products together individually? Well, we were talking to Mark's team, and it turns out that. Uh, this major disaster plan is much more than just increasing capacity. There are many other aspects to it, such as the service managers needing to change the hours, the shift hours of their employees, maybe pre-provision some of the groups for this temporary usage just during this time, and many other little miscellaneous things. So with a platform like Aegis, you can expand out the automation of these capabilities over time, such as you see here. Wow, that really is powerful. So not only can we automate our own products, but even third-party products as well. That's really powerful. Well, okay, this looks like a good start on addressing the first challenge. What about the second challenge around keeping management and reporting systems current? So within the Operations Center dashboard, we can look at the claims processing service, and we can see that overall the health is up and running and it's happy. But what we're now noticing is that we have an abnormal amount, like a high volume, 
of claims that are assigned to agents, as well as a backlog of estimation that needs to be done. Okay, so I can see my app, I can see the impact on the business, and I can see that as we've added the web tier, now the back end tier seems to be struggling to That's keep up correct. with the front tier. Wow. Okay, that looks like that covers the second challenge and actually part of even the fifth challenge that, uh, mm -hmm. that you had, Mark. This is great stuff, guys. Um, we've made good progress, but there are still more challenges to address. So come back on Friday to the keynote. We're going to show you how our team worked with Acme to build solutions to the rest of the challenges that you've seen here today. Thanks, Tobin. Thanks, Ted. Thanks, Alex. And Mark, thanks. All right, thanks. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. What a great introduction to Workload IQ, and thanks very much to the demonstration teams. So let's give both teams a great uh, hand for, for what they've shown us today. So please do plan to come back on Friday and see the rest of that demonstration, but I think you'll get a chance to meet and be introduced to many of these great combinations over the coming uh, sessions over the coming week. In fact, we have over, 70, over 75 sessions uh, that are NetIQ over the next three days. There'll be several members in IT Central and around the exhibit hall to meet with you, and they're eager to provide you with information about our products, as well as give you live demonstrations of the already integrated solutions. It's been exciting to see the engineering teams come together with so much energy and excitement to see, see what power we have here in the combination of these technologies. So I'd like to just leave you with one final thought. It's our theme, it's our message, it's our mission, and that is, at NetIQ, we are relentlessly focused on our customers' success. Thank you very much. Enjoy your week at BrainShare.